So martial arts is like literally the language I speak. How do you get there on a deeper level is you gotta have principles. So you gotta have structure, you gotta have base, and then you gotta have the sensitivity to make things work. And most martial artists and MMA fighters, they don't have sensitivity. So, Dan, thank you so much for coming. For those of you who don't know uh, who this man is, if you could kindly introduce yourself and tell us who you are and where to find you. Well, uh, I've been known since, I guess, 97 or so as Dan the Wolfman. So, basically, uh, I'm Dan the Wolfman, everybody. been doing martial arts since I was nine years old, since about 1986. All kinds of different styles. Fought MMA Pro a few times. Did some uh, advanced uh, grappling tournaments, that kind of thing. Fought in two Daito Juko kudo world championships in japan lived about a year and my ha- year and a half of my life in japan mm. commentated fight pass in japan uh pancreas live on ufc fight pass five events did three pro wrestling matches in japan done some acting and stunt work i have a dvd and a youtube channel and all that kind of goodness before i forget where could we find you like what what's your best website that we can reach you at Type in Dan the Wolfman, you'll find my website, danthewolfman.com, kitchizu.com, thecombatsystem.com. Yeah. They all go to the same place, uh, so I'm easy nice. to find, Dan the Wolfman. And um, my YouTube channel is a lot of mostly grappling stuff, but now I, you know, I've kind of covered and done everything. So You have. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, so first of all, before I, I, we, we proceed, I want to thank Remy. Uh, thank you, Remy, for, for, for this. This wouldn't have been possible if uh, I didn't reach out to Remy. And uh, I have to actually thank Rokas because I, I interviewed Rokas and then Rokas interviewed Remy. And then uh, I was really interested in Remy's work because Remy, in my opinion, and I think you'd agree, is a very holistic martial artist. And he, like you, makes all kinds of arts work and integrates things. So thank you, Remy. Appreciate that. Uh, that's why we're here. Yeah, I've um, known Remy for quite a few years, and, and he's a skilled guy that's really used as a keto, as a bouncer, and in yeah. street fights, and doing other stuff, and, um, you know, and he had a Wing Chun background before that for like five years, a little yeah. bit of boxing, a little bit of grappling, watches my 52 videos, I see him integrating some of my, yeah, my yeah, blocks yeah. and stuff into his uh, tension Aikido, and under Seagal now. That's not yeah. how he came up, and now he's like in that instructor program thing or something like that. So, uh, my coach, Greek guy, one of my best friends, um, he says, listen, I see what you're doing with Karate Unity, and you're basically trying to functionalize and make sense and explore martial arts through the lens of karate, but you want to cross-train with everybody else because that's the best way to do it. He goes, there's one man on this planet that you must talk to. His name is Dan the Wolfman. Talk to this guy because... The stuff that he's been doing, Chris, we've been doing since the beginning of time, and I got inspiration. I never mentioned Dan's name, but I've been looking at his stuff, and he's been inspiring the stuff that I've been showing you. So, you know, um, yeah, yeah, so he he says, he says, you better get Dan on here. But so, he was just um, giving me, so the Greek guy's just giving me Greek love because, you know, but then he, of course, goes, we've been doing it forever because the Greeks invented everything. MMA, that's just pancreation. It's the third Olympic sport. <laughs> oh, you know what? Fighting, fighting's been around, man. Well, I've been doing martial arts since I was nine. So martial arts is like literally the language I speak. Now my body's going downhill, and it's very, you know it's a hard time in my life now because I'm not the same fighter I was before I hit forty. You know, I, I can just kind of do it because I've always been open minded. Right. I mean, I started Taekwondo at nine, but I was reading Tao Ji Kune Do at fifteen. I was reading yeah. all martial arts books. Yep. Whatever I could get my hands on about any style, yep. I would read, I would collect from, I'd go into old bookstores and f- if I could find like a judo book from the 40s or Exactly. 50s, yep. Um, yep, yep, yep. You know, and that, that, I mean, there wasn't YouTube then. It was different. Right. You, had, you had to really work for it. You had to be passionate to, to, to scrape together any knowledge you can get. Uh, and, and perhaps that made b- better martial artists even. We'll, we'll see. You know, in the in the well-rounded sense or in the street fighter sense versus the, you know, only sporting aspect where now they can slow motion and replay the video and 
uh, all right, that, like right. the jiu-jitsu guys. Well, y- you got a lot <laughs> available to you now that y- we didn't have before when I started jiu-jitsu in like 97. So, you know, things evolve, but, you know, that warrior spirit and the old training and the training tough and some of that is getting lost as different styles is always, every style always gets kind of watered down. Um, yeah. But, but uh, you know, I could watch and I can learn, but, it, you know, so I haven't really, really done this or that, but I, I did Wing Chun for three months. I've dabbled off and on in Aikido schools just a little bit, even though I'm getting famous for that. I did do a one credit Tai Chi class. I mean, uh, I, I did Master Wong Sing for like an hour to try and move this summer in lockdown when there was no exercise, you know, like I, the keeping the open mind thing is, is vitally important and also kind of analyzing different movement styles and and stuff like that so like let's just say you take aikido or you take a form or a kata or you take a chisau or you mm-hmm. take hubad or you take push hands or you take any of these formal techniques you know that are done in two man sets or solo drills or whatever how what do you, what modifications do you make to make it functional for combat sports or for and for combatives and self-defense it's a good question and i think it's something yeah. i just have really started to do um a few days ago as far as like making the keto work well okay i made it work bouncing my whole life i bounced in the same bar steven seagal met his <laughs> karate instructor okay. as a dishwasher literally i just realized that which is pretty ironically funny <laughs> yeah that i've literally did at 18 19 20 years old i was a keto wrist locking people in the bar seagal as a teenager probably 15 or something he met wow. his first karate sensei that's so hilarious. that's a little tidbit that's just you know funny the way the world is sometimes um but i also learn to functionalize that in the wrestling jiu-jitsu judo sense so if a guy's pointing his finger at me or grabbing my shirt i could do it but i learn to functionalize that from if he collar ties my neck mm. or if he reaches for me so if he collar ties me i got a wrestling shoulder shrug to kodagashi to Juji Katami very easily you've seen in my videos uh, a couple days ago I taught a private lesson to a new guy yes and I shared with you the highlights of that yes so your question yes, was yes. how to functionalize some of that yeah that's so the this thing, yeah. this week and next week I have a few of those videos launching and one of the very good en- things how do I functionalize this chi sao sensitivity kung fu ish right. system ish thing whatever right well right. one really good way is we did uh, wrestling pummeling, and then I ah. hit him with a bunch of standing locks. You saw the highlights of. Yes, I uh, did. It'll air t- tomorrow for my viewers, and also from we tied neck pummeling. So if you can do the locks and the standing and the sensitivity and the ah, okay. kind of lock wash internal energy throws yes. and your we tied neck spins and your knees and your elbows, and you can maybe lock off of it. That's the functionalizing of this stuff now again guys to have higher level skills from a lot of styles no it's not easy unless you have a base of effective grappling and effective striking the lights are going on now (laughs) okay so if you can spar if you can have a grappling base now once you have the base knowledge of fighting now maybe that sensitivity comes into play and the off balancing and um Maybe the Greek guy was asking, the, how do you get there on a deeper level? Is you got to have principles. Yes. And the biggest biggest principles I'm preaching to me are spinal structure. You got to have your structure. You got to have base. Because if you don't have balance and you don't have structure, you don't have anything. So you got to have structure. You got to have base, and then you got to have the sensitivity to make things work. And most martial artists and MMA fighters are sensitive. They don't have sensitivity training. They don't have sensitivity. I'm not going to say Muay Thai guys don't because the guys in Thailand do light clinching and they do yeah, have the very good yeah. sensitivity. Yeah. But America... Or, wouldn't you say wrestlers have, have that? Wrestlers and jiu-jitsu players? I would... Sh- sh- yes and no. In some hmm. ways. Okay. Wrestlers... I would say the Russian wrestlers have more sensitivity than... American wrestlers. American wrestlers kind of lean over too much. It's head over the foot. It's all about muscle power. Mm. I'm not talking about guys that really get it, like John Smith, that teaches mm-hmm. structure. He, he's not using the term all the time, 
But when you watch a John Smith instructional, he's teaching systema. He's teaching structure because structure is structure. He's teaching no proper mechanics, proper structure. I'm strong if I lift my head and I turn this corner. And he's not a big buff guy, but a lot of wrestlers are all into like power, power, forward, double blast, blah, 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 blah. Not giving wrestling's hard. I'm not giving wrestling a bad name. It's the, yeah, not, yeah. It's the base of all world's martial arts and every culture throughout history, pretty much. Um, so really, it should be your base. And if you look at all the MMA fighters, most of the champions, that's their Actually, base. Yeah, Greco Roman. Um, but and the jujitsu guys, it's kind of like they do and they don't. They have sensitivity in the certain things that they drill over and over again, and they lack the principle, the concept, the conceptual understanding a lot of them to know that I'm starting to wrist lock them because they haven't seen it before. Oh my God. Right. Literally, you fo- your whole martial art is focused on joint locks. And yet, and people are like, oh, I wouldn't just give my hands. I'm like, these are pro fighters and jujitsu guys and some judo guys. They know all about hand fighting. Their whole style is about hand fighting and grips and positioning. And yet, they give it and they don't feel it. So that's kind of a lack of sensitivity, a lack of biomechanical uh, understanding. Hmm. Um, but then you look at Hicks and Gracie and all these world champions, all of them have all said he toyed with them like they were little kids. Right, right, right. Hickson's on a different level. I think Hickson was really, I mean, his back is Jack now. Mm-hmm. Hickson was on another level because I think primarily because of amazing sensitivity, balance, awareness, body awareness. That's real jujitsu. Right, right. I wish my jujitsu was half of that. That's 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 the thing. To me, Hickson Gracie is the same as Mufune, is the is same as Ueshiba. Yeah, is the same yeah. as maybe Vasilia. There's very few people like this in the world. Gozo. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You These know, are big names, man. These are big names. <laughs> always, but it's the same thing. Yeah. So Hickson's doing jujitsu, and this guy over here is doing Aikido, and this guy Mafuin's doing judo, and all his black belts are trying to throw him, and he floats like Yoda over their hip. <laughs> he can do that because of his sensitivity, because of his right. body awareness. And he can float because he used to have bass. You can't float and dance and play. I can. Sometimes I get out there and I don't even have to look. And I'm like locking people when I'm really exhausted. There's a certain consciousness thing that happens. Um, But you have to understand the bass in the background first. So like you need kickboxing. You need judo. You need wrestling. Like you need. And that's the stuff you should do as you're young. But me and you, I don't know. You look better than me. My back is jacked. I'm, I just went to a doctor a day. I need a bunch of MRIs. My neck and back. And, you know, I got... Oh, it's pretty beat up. But yeah, that doesn't yeah. mean I want to stop chaining. If I can meet in a park and throw some guys using sensitivity and more, I guess, internal energy. Though I've never yeah. done... I've never done sing I. I've yeah. never really done Tai Chi other than a one credit class. But I'm a martial artist and it's all the same thing. Yeah, I just want to add to that. My uh, my Kempo instructor, um, he's uh, he passed away in 2015, but uh, he was one of the most open-minded guys on the planet that I knew. Uh, we we developed a really close relationship. I trained with him uh, three years before he passed. Every Sunday, we would train four hours in his backyard, and he just unloaded his mind, his heart, his soul to me. And he was basically saying, you know, there's really nothing mystical about. Bagua and all these internal arts he goes it just comes down to good solid biomechanics right um that's basically it you know um and you know he was showing me stuff like how to flip someone's energy and it's just a matter of just kind of rotating your spine sinking sinking you in your shoulders and just kind of centering yourself right and, and all, all of that stuff is just biomechanical principles there's nothing really special about it right so I I, 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 got, I got I got pretty impressed by just the simplicity of that. Yeah, I, I yeah. mean, sometimes these backyard training garage groups, those were the best the best training. Oh, and, I miss it. Yeah. You know, I don't get to do that stuff often. That's why no. I try to make some reason. Sometimes I, I try to make these jujitsu guys stand up, like get off your butt, just so I can practice defense by being loose and stuff. 
or I have two videos at the Kodokan. I visited the Kodokan. Right. And my, my, my judo offense, like my, my, my judo is no gi. My, my judo isn't like, I'm not an Olympic judo guy. I've gone against a couple Olympic judokas, but no gi, not gi. Yeah. With gi, they would have launched me on my head. I'm, I'm quite sure. Um, so my offense isn't great, but my defense is pretty high level. Yep. And what that is, is just by being sensitive. And the best footage, I think it's the end of the second day. I had to put it last because most people won't get it. Most people can't see stuff. But the best footage is me and this old guy doing nothing to each other. Because he's starting to make a move at me and I just block his hip or I just make a subtle adjustment. He's making the subtle adjustments because he can't horse... You know, you can't use the muscle to overcome the perfect technique and structure a- anymore, ballistically. To- well, that so video that, that that's you sent the me, high level stuff. yeah, that, that video that you sent me, uh, I can't remember, I think it was a minute and 39 or at 39 second mark, uh, you were with your partner there and you kind of like, you kind of slipped in there and you kind of like just glanced off, glanced off of his hand and hit him. You know, and kind of just rolled with it, and it was you stayed in that pocket, and it was just a yeah. minutia. It was a minutia movement. Um, I, I'm used to looking at that, and I'm used to training that way. Uh, and uh, like when I saw that, I was going, "Oh man, this guy knows what he's doing, <laughs> right?" Good. Th- thank you. I, yeah. That video is going to air tomorrow. I'm sure it's going to get a lot of hate because I titled it a certain way. I went, you know what? Yeah. Let's, <laughs> let's give us. I said this isn't bullshito. Because they're all going to go, you couldn't do that to an MMA guy. You couldn't do that to a jiu-jitsu guy. I'm like, maybe you should educate yourself before. Especially right now in the world. Like, maybe you should actually educate your stuff instead of just repeating hearsay and memes. Oh, no, for sure. Like, I, uh, I have videos sparring all these guys. I am a jiu-jitsu black belt. Uh, hello. <laughs> no, 100%. I think we've got some good answers here. So functionality, um, just to wrap up. Basically, you know, sensitivity is your key thing. To gain that, you need a good base, a, a good a good time in a base art. So you were saying like a striking art, like kickboxing, boxing, Muay Thai, um, judo, wrestling, jiu-jitsu type of thing, right?